United States Air Force's Central Command USAFCENT, AFCENT, is a named Air Force of the United States Air Force headquartered at Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina. It is the Air Force Service component of United States Central Command USCENTCOM, a joint Department of Defense Combatant Command responsible for U.S. security interests in 27 nations that stretch from the Horn of Africa through the Persian Gulf region, into Central Asia. Activated as 9th Air Force on 8 April 1942, the command fought in World War II both in the Western Desert Campaign in Egypt and Libya and as the tactical fighter component of the United States Strategic Air Forces in Europe USSTAF, engaging enemy forces in France, the Low Countries and in Nazi Germany. During the Cold War, it was one of two numbered air forces of Tactical Air Command. Co-designated as United States Central Command Air Forces on 1 January 1983, on 2009 as part of a complicated transfer of lineage, the lineage and history of the 9th Air Force was bestowed on USAFCENT, and a new 9th Air Force, which technically had no previous history, was activated. It has fought in the 1991 Gulf War, War in Afghanistan OEFA, 2001 present, the Iraq War OIF, 2003 to 2010, as well as various engagements within USCENTCOM. Topic: History. United States Air Forces Central is the direct descendant organization of 9th Air Force, established in 1941. AFCENT was formed as the United States Central Command Air Forces under Tactical Air Command TAC. CENTAF initially consisted of designated United States Air Force elements of the Rapid Deployment Joint Task Force which was inactivated and reformed as USCENTCOM in 1983. On 1 March 2008 USCENTAF was redesignated USAFCENT. It shared its commander with 9th Air Force until August 2009. 9th Air Force was formally redesignated USAFCENT on 5 August 2009. A new 9th Air Force was established that date for command and control of CONUS-based Air Combat Command units formally assigned to the previous 9th Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> World War II In June 1942, the German Africa Corps' advance in North Africa forced the British Eighth Army to retreat towards Egypt putting British Middle East Command at risk. The United States Army Air Forces USAAF had already planned for a buildup of American air power in the Middle East in January 1942 in response to a request from the British Chief of the Air Staff, but the first units arrived unexpectedly on 12 June 1942 as coal. Harry A. Halverson, commanding 23 B-24D Liberator heavy bombers and a hand-picked crews a group called HALPRO, from Halverson Project, decided to move to Egypt. They had initially been assigned to the China-Burma-India theater to attack Japan from airfields in China, but after the fall of Rangoon the Burma Road was cut, so the detachment could not be logistically supported in China. HALPRO was quickly diverted from its original mission to a new one, Interdictory raids from airfields in Egypt against shipping and North African ports supporting Axis operations. On 28 June 1942, Major General Louis H. Breton arrived at Cairo to command the U.S. Army Middle East Air Force USAMEAF, which was activated immediately. USAMEAF comprised the Halverson Project, Breton's Detachment 9th Bombardment Squadron Heavy and other personnel which Breton brought from India, and the air section of the U.S. Military North African Mission. Several USAAF units were sent to join USAMEAF during next weeks in the destruction of Rommel's Africa Corps by support to ground troops and secure sea and air communications in the Mediterranean. In September 1942, RAF Middle East Command's senior air staff officer, Air Commodore H.E.P. Wigglesworth was authorized by Air Chief Marshal Sir Arthur Tedder to select targets for all U.S. heavy bombers. A development of some importance in the career of USAMEAF manifested itself administratively on 12 October 1942, when orders were cut assigning nine officers to the IX Bomber Command, which organization was then and for a month afterwards unofficial. This command had its roots in a discussion on 5 September between Tedder's senior air staff officer, Air Vice Marshal H.E.P. Wigglesworth, and G3 officers of USAMEAF, during which Wigglesworth asserted that he had control, delegated by Tedder, over the target selection for the U.S. heavy bombers. Colonel Patrick W. Timberlake, G3 of Breton's staff, took a serious view of this assertion in that it violated the Arnold Portal Towers Agreement that American combat units assigned to theaters of British strategic responsibility were to be organized in homogeneous American formations, under the strategic control of the appropriate British Commander-in-Chief, 
In a memo of 7 September, Timberlake granted that this canon might be justifiably violated in the case of the 12th Bombardment and 57th Fighter Groups, but he could see no reason why operational control of the 1st Provisional and 98th Groups, comprising four-fifths of the heavy bomber force in the Middle East, should not be vested in American hands. Subsequent negotiations carried the point with the British, who even turned over their 160 squadron Liberators to the operational control of IX Bomber Command. On 12 October a small staff moved into Grey Pillars RAF headquarters in Garden City, Cairo, and thenceforth USAMEAF's bombers operated only under the strategic direction of the British. Timberlake headed the organization, with Calbera as his A3 and Lt. Col. Donald M. Kaiser as his Chief of Staff. The Army Air Forces in World War II On 1 November 1942, General Bernard Montgomery launched an attack on the Africa Corps at Kidney Ridge. After initially resisting the attack, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel decided he no longer had the resources to hold his line and on 3 November he ordered his troops to withdraw. Allied victory in the Second Battle of Alamein was accomplished. Ninth Air Force had been first constituted as V Air Support Command, part of Air Force Combat Command, at Bowman Field, Kentucky on the 11th of September 1941. Its responsibility was to direct and coordinate the training activities of National Guard observation squadrons inducted into federal service with those of light bomber units training with the Army ground forces. However, a lack of unity of command in the organizational setup led to an early discontinuation of the Air Support Commands and V Air Support Command was redesignated as 9th Air Force in April 1942. It was reassigned to Bowling Field, Washington, D.C. on of July and transferred without personnel or equipment to Cairo, Egypt on 12 November 1942. The 9th Air Force mission comprised, 1 gain air superiority, 2 deny the enemy the ability to replenish or replace losses, and 3 offer ground forces close support in northeast Africa. On 12 November 1942, the U.S. Army Middle East Air Force was dissolved and replaced by HQ 9th Air Force, commanded by Lt. Gen. Louis H. Breton. At that time, the 9th Air Force consisted of IX Bomber Command Brigadier General Patrick W. Timberlake at Ismailia, Egypt IX Fighter Command Colonel John C. Kilbourne en route to Egypt IX Air Service Command Brigadier General Elmer E. Adler Topic operations in Western Desert Campaign, 1942–1943 By the end of 1942 a total of 370 aircraft had been ferried to the 9th Air Force. While the great majority were P-40s, Consolidated B-24 Liberators the original Halverson Detachment HALPRO, 98th Bombardment Group, 376th Bombardment Group, and RAF units, and B-25 Mitchells 12th and 340th Bombardment Groups, there were also more than 50 twin-engine transports 316th Troop Carrier Group, which made it possible to build an effective local air transport service. 9th Air Force P-40F fighters 57th, 79th, and 324th fighter groups supported the British 8th Army's drive across Egypt and Libya, escorting bombers and flying strafing and dive bombing missions against airfields, communications, and troop concentrations. Other targets attacked were shipping and harbour installations in Libya, Tunisia, Sicily, Italy, Crete, and Greece to cut enemy supply lines to Africa. The Palm Sunday Massacre was one noteworthy mission by the P-40 and Spitfire groups, after an Allied Air Forces command reorganization effective 18 February 1943, the 9th Air Force began to report to RAF Middle East Command under Air Chief Marshal Sir Sholto Douglas. Additionally, the 9th's 57th, 79th, and 324th Fighter Groups and its 12th and 340th Bombardment Groups were transferred to the operational control of the Northwest African Tactical Air Force under the command of Air Vice Marshal Sir Arthur Cunningham. The 9th's 316th Troop Carrier Group flew its missions with the Northwest African Troop Carrier Command in February 1943, after the Africa Corps had been driven into Tunisia, the Germans took the offensive and pushed through the Kasserine Pass before being stopped with the help of both 9th and 12th Air Force units in the battle. The Allies drove the enemy back into a pocket around Bizet and Tunis, where Axis forces surrendered in May. Thus, Tunisia became available for launching attacks on Pantelleria Operation Corkscrew, Sicily Operation Husky, and mainland Italy. At the time of Operation Husky, the invasion of Sicily on 10 July 1943, 9th Air Force headquarters was still based at Cairo in Egypt while the headquarters of 9th Fighter Command and IX Bomber Command were stationed at Tripoli and Benghazi, Libya, respectively. 
During this critical period of World War II when the Allied forces finally left North Africa for Europe, the groups of the 9th Air Force consisted of, 12th Bombardment Group at SFAX El Mau, Tunisia with B-25 Mitchells 81st, 82nd, 83rd, and 434th Bombardment Squadrons 340th Bombardment Group at SFAX South, Tunisia with B-25 Mitchells 486th, 487th, 488th, and 489th Bombardment Squadrons 57th Fighter Group at Hani Main, Tunisia with P-40F Warhawks 64th, 65th, and 66th Fighter Squadrons 79th Fighter Group at Causeway Landing Ground, Tunisia with P-40F Warhawks 85th, 86th, and 87th Fighter Squadrons 324th Fighter Group with P-40F Warhawks 314th Squadron at Hani Main, 315th Squadron at Cabret, Egypt, and 316th Squadron at Causeway 98th Bombardment Group with B-24D Liberators 343rd and 344th Squadrons at Leet, Libya, 345th and 415th Squadrons at Benina, Libya 376th Bombardment Group at Burqa, Tunisia with B-24D Liberators 512th, 513th, 514th, and 515th Bombardment Squadrons 316th Troop Carrier Group at Deviswar, Egypt with C-47s, C-53s and DC-3s 36th, 37th, and 44th Squadrons at Deviswar. Egypt, 45th Squadron at Castel Benito, Libya. During most of 1943, the 9th Air Force was officially assigned to RAF Middle East Command of the Mediterranean Air Command. However, the 9th, 12th, and 340th Bombardment Groups were assigned to the Tactical Bomber Force, the 57th and 79th Fighter Groups were assigned to the Desert Air Force, and a 324th Fighter Group was surprisingly assigned to 12 Air Support Command. The Tactical Bomber Force under Air Commodore Lawrence Sinclair, the Desert Air Force under Air Vice Marshal Harry Broadhurst, and 12 Air Support Command under Major General Edwin House were subcommands of the Northwest African Tactical Air Force NATAF under Air Marshal Sir Arthur Cunningham. NATAF was one of the three major subcommands of the Northwest African Air Forces NAAF under Lieutenant General Carl Spartz. NATAF, Northwest African Strategic Air Force NASAF, and Northwest African Coastal Air Force NACAF, formed the Classic Tri-Force, the basis for the creation of NAAF in February 1943. Ninth Air Force groups attacked airfields and rail facilities in Sicily and took part in Operation Husky, carried paratroopers, and flew reinforcements to ground units on the island. The heavy bombardment groups B-24s of the 9th also participated in the low-level assault of the oil refineries at Plosti, Romania on 1 August 1943. On 22 August 1943 the following groups were transferred from the 9th Air Force to the 12th Air Force 12th Bombardment Group medium at Germany, Sicily with B-25s 57th Fighter Group on Sicily with P-40s 79th Fighter Group on Sicily with P-40s 324th Fighter Group at El Hawaria, Tunisia with P-40s and 340th Bombardment Group medium at Comiso, Sicily with B-25 Sthe 316th Troop Carrier Group was operating under Northwest African Troop Carrier Command with C-47 Dakotas and CG-4A Waco gliders. Topic: 9th Air Force 1943 to June 1944. Concurrently with the amalgamation of 9th Air Force formations in the Mediterranean with 12th Air Force, plans were afoot in Britain to devolve 8th Air Force's medium bomber force to a separate command. This command was offered to Brereton, who accepted, with utmost eagerness, and the force was constituted, also as 9th Air Force, on 16 October 1943. During the winter of 1943–1944 9th Air Force expanded at an extraordinary rate, so that by the end of May, its complement ran to 45 flying groups operating some 5,000 aircraft. With the necessary ground support units, the total number of personnel assigned to 9th Air Force would be more than 200,000, a total greater than that of 8th Air Force. HQ 9th Air Force extended IX Bomber Command's choice of targets considerably, although first priority for Operation Point Blank the Combined Bomber Offensive CBO of U.S. and RAF Air Forces against the Luftwaffe and German aircraft industry and next priority for Operation Crossbow codename for operations against German V-weapon sites targets was maintained. U.S. and British Air Forces aimed to defeat the German Luftwaffe in the air and on the ground, to bring about complete air supremacy prior to the invasion of Normandy. Operational missions involved attacks on rail marshalling yards, railroads, airfields, industrial plants, military installations, and other enemy targets in France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Other targets were German Atlantic Wall defences along the English Channel coast of France. On 4 January 1944-19 Air Support Command was activated at RAF Middle Wallop to support Patton's Third Army in Europe. 
In February 1944 the 9th Air Force underwent a reorganization and several troop carrier groups relocated headquarters. Major General Otto P. Whalen became commanding general of 19 Air Support Command, replacing Major General Elwood R. Quesada. The latter assumed dual command of both IX Fighter Command and the IX Air Support Command, which took control of all its fighter and reconnaissance units. HQ IX Air Support Command changed from Aldermaston Court to Middle Wallop. Major General Paul L. Williams, who had commanded the troop carrier operations in Sicily and Italy, replaced Giles in command of IX Troop Carrier Command. The IXTCC command and staff officers were an excellent mix of combat veterans from those earlier assaults, and a few key officers were held over for continuity. The groups assigned were a mixture of experience, but training would be needed to confront the expected massive movements of troops of the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions. On 18 April 1944, the IX and 19 Air Support Commands were redesignated, respectively, as IX Tactical Air Command and 19 Tactical Air Command. Between 1 May and the invasion on 6 June, the 9th flew approximately 35,000 sorties, attacking targets such as airfields, railroad yards, and coastal gun positions. By the end of May 1944, the IXTCC had available 1,207 C 47 Skytrain troop carrier airplanes and was one third overstrength, creating a strong reserve. Three quarters of the aircraft were less than one year old on D-Day, and all were in excellent condition. Gliders were incorporated, over 2,100 CG-4 Waco gliders had been sent to the UK, and after attrition during training operations, 1,118 were available for operations, along with 301 larger airspeed Horsa gliders received from the British. <laughs> Order of battle, June 6, 1944 Topic. Operations in Europe 1944–1945 On D-Day, IX Troop Carrier Command units flew over 2,000 sorties conducting combat parachute jumps and glider landings as part of American airborne landings in Normandy of Operation Neptune. Other 9th Air Force units carried out massive air attacks with P-51 Mustang, P-47 Thunderbolt fighter bombers, North American B-25 Mitchell and Martin B-26 Marauder medium bombers. Air cover during the morning amphibious assault by Allied forces on the beaches of France was flown by P-38 Lightnings. With the beaches secure, its tactical air units then provided the air power for the Allied breakout from the Normandy beachhead in the summer of 1944 during the Battle of Cherbourg, Battle for Con, and the ultimate breakout from the beachhead, Operation Cobra. Unlike 8th Air Force, whose units stayed in the United Kingdom, 9th Air Force units were very mobile, first deploying to France on 16 June 1944, ten days after the Normandy invasion by moving P-47 Thunderbolts to a beachhead landing strip. Because of their short range, operational combat units would have to move to quickly prepared bases close to the front as soon as the Allied ground forces advanced. The bases were called, Advanced Landing Grounds, or ALGs. On the continent, many ALGs were built either from scratch or from captured enemy airfields throughout France, the Low Countries and Germany. 9th Air Force units moved frequently from one ALG to another. By early August most 9th Air Force operational fighter and bomber groups were transferred to bases in France and assigned to the U.S. 12th Army Group. These groups were then assigned to Tactical Air Command TAC organizations which supported Army ground units. 29 Tactical Air Command 29 TAC was activated in France on 15 September 1944, commanded by Brig. General Richard E. Nugent, to support operations of the U.S. 9th Army. 29 TAC supported the 9th Army in the north, IX TAC supported the 1st Army in the center, and 19 TAC supported the 3rd Army in the south. Air cover over Allied-controlled areas on the continent was performed by the IX Air Defense Command. 9th Air Force groups made numerous moves within France, the Low Countries and Western Germany to keep within range of the advancing battle front before the end of hostilities in May 1945. During Operation Dragoon, the invasion of southern France in August 1944, two 9th fighter groups were transferred to the provisional United States, Free French 1st Tactical Air Force supporting the invasion forces drive north. As part of Operation Market Garden, the 9th Air Force transferred its entire IX Troop Carrier Command with its 14 C-47 groups to the 1st Allied Airborne Army in September 1944. Those troop carrier groups flew many of the C-47s and towed CG-4 Waco gliders for the Allied Airborne Unit Drops — Operation Market Garden — to take the bridges northwest of Eindhoven at Sun Mun. Sun en Bruegel, Vegel, Grave, Nijmegen and Arnhem in the Netherlands. In December 1944 through January 1945, 9th Air Force fighters and bombers were critical in defeating the Wehrmacht during the Battle of the Bulge. 
Initially American, British, and Canadian air power was grounded by very bad winter weather, but then the bad weather broke, freeing the tactical air forces to help break the back of the Wehrmacht attack. The long smash across France, Belgium, and Luxembourg was the highlight of the existence of the 9th Air Force. In the spring of 1945, 9th Air Force troop carrier units flew airborne parachute and glider units again during Operation Varsity, the Allied assault over the Rhine River on 24 March 1945. Operation Varsity was the single largest airborne drop in history. The operation saw the first use of the Curtis Wright C-46 commando transport in Europe, operating with the reliable C-47 Skytrain of previous airborne operations, an experiment which ended with the catastrophic loss of 28% of the C-46s participating. Topic: <laughs> Post-war demobilization. Ninth Air Force tactical air support operations were flown over Western Germany until the end of hostilities on the 7th of May. However, once the victory had been gained, the United States plunged into demobilization, just as it had done at the end of the First World War. Most officers and men were sent back to the United States and their units inactivated. Others were assigned to the new United States Air Forces in Europe and were moved to captured Luftwaffe airfields to perform occupation duties. Some transport units relocated to France. Finally, with the mission completed, on 2 December 1945 the 9th Air Force was inactivated at USAFE headquarters at Wiesbaden, Germany. Cold War See also, 19th Air Force Following World War II, 9th Air Force was reactivated on 28 March 1946 at Biggs AAF, Texas. After several relocations, on 20 August 1954, 9th Air Force headquarters was assigned to Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina, where it remains today. The post-war numbered air forces were components of the new major command structure of the United States Air Force, and 9th Air Force became one of the tactical air forces of the new Tactical Air Command. 9th Air Force commanded TAC wings east of the Mississippi River. Initially being equipped with propeller-driven F-51, F-47 and F-82 aircraft during the post-war years, in the 1950s, 9th Air Force units received the jet-powered F, RF-80 Shooting Star, F-84G, F Thunderjet, F-86D, H Sabre, and F-100 Super Sabre aircraft. 9th Air Force squadrons and wings were frequently deployed to NATO during the 1950s and 1960s as dual-based USAFE units, and reinforcing NATO forces in West Germany and France during the Lebanon Crisis of 1958 and the 1961 Berlin Wall Crisis. During the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, 9th Air Force units went on war alert, deploying to bases in Florida, being able to respond to the crisis on a moment's notice. During the Vietnam War, detached 9th Air Force units engaged in combat operations over Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. The practice of stripping away squadrons and aircraft from their home tactical air command wings and attaching them indefinitely to a new wing under Pacific Air Forces was the method used for long-term deployments to the South Vietnam and Thailand air bases engaged in combat operations. In addition to these operational deployments, 9th Air Force units performed a backfilling role in Japan and South Korea for PACAF as well as in Italy and Spain for USAFE to replace units whose aircraft and personnel were deployed to Southeast Asia. With the end of American involvement during the early 1970s, these units were returned in large part to their home 9th Air Force units in the United States. During the remainder of the 1970s, NATO deployments resumed supporting the Comet, Coronet and Crested Cap exercises. These deployments were designed to exercise CONUS-based Air Force Squadron's long-range deployment capabilities and to familiarize the personnel with the European theater of operations. During these NATO deployments, exercises with Army infantry and armored units were conducted to enhance the close air support role in Europe. Ninth Air Force wings in 1979 were 1st Tactical Fighter Wing F-15A, B, FF, Langley Air Force Base, Virginia 4th Tactical Fighter Wing F-4E, SJ, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, North Carolina 23D Tactical Fighter Wing A-7D, L, England Air Force Base, Louisiana 31st Tactical Fighter Wing F4D Zay, HS Homestead Air Force Base Florida 33D Tactical Fighter Wing F15A B EG Eglin Air Force Base Florida 56th Tactical Fighter Wing F4D EMC McDill Air Force Base Florida 347th Tactical Fighter Wing F4E My Moody Air Force Base Georgia 354th Tactical Fighter Wing AOA10A MB Myrtle Beach Air Force Base South Carolina 
363D Tactical Reconnaissance Wing RF4C Joe Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina During the 1980s, 9th Air Force wings upgraded from the Vietnam-era F-4s and A-7s to newer F-15s, F-16 and A-10 aircraft. First-generation F-15A, B models were later sent to Air National Guard fighter units while regular Air Force units upgraded to the higher capability F-15C, Ds and the new F-15E replaced the F-4E in the 4th TFW. With the end of the Cold War in the early 1990s, the 1991 Base Realignment and Closure Commission BRAC reductions meant the closing of Myrtle Beach AFB and England AFB. MacDill AFB was realigned under Air Combat Command as the headquarters of United States Central Command and United States Special Operations Command, but minus tactical aircraft operations with the reassignment of the 56th Fighter Wing to Air Education and Training Command and relocation to Luke AFB, Arizona. The restructuring of USAF CONUS forces by the inactivation of Tactical Air Command and subsequent creation of Air Combat Command realigned 9th Air Force with new units and new missions. In addition, the effects of Hurricane Andrew at Homestead AFB on 24 August 1992 essentially destroyed the facility. Although both George H. W. Bush and President Clinton promised to rebuild Homestead, the BRAC designated the installation for realignment to the Air Force Reserve, and on 1 April 1994 headquarters, ACC inactivated its base support units and transferred base support responsibility to the Air Force Reserve Command and AFRC's 482D fighter wing, effectively ending ACC ownership of the base. Concurrently, ACC also transferred responsibility for MacDill AFB to Air Mobility Command following the arrival of an air refueling unit and redesignation of the host air base wing as an air refueling wing, later redesignated as an air mobility wing. Topic: <laughs> CENTAF and the 1991 Gulf War. In 1980, 9th Air Force units were allocated to the new Rapid Deployment Joint Task Force In 1983, the RDJTF became a separate unified command known as the United States Central Command focusing on the Middle East. 9th Air Force provided the aircraft, personnel and materiel to form United States Central Command Air Forces the USAF air power of CENTCOM, which was also headquartered at Shore AFB. Starting in 1981, 9th Air Force aircraft and personnel were deployed to Egypt for exercise Bright Star. During Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm, 9th Air Force units deployed to the Middle East, and flew combat missions over Kuwait and Iraq. After the end of hostilities, units from the 9th flew air missions over Iraq as part of Operation Deny Flight, Operation Northern Watch and Operation Southern Watch. From 1991, the 4404th Composite Wing provisional served as a forward force, for most of that period flying from King Abdul Aziz AB, Saudi Arabia. Despite the boring nature of the quasi peacetime patrols over both the northern and southern no fly zones, the years after 1991 were not entirely without hostile action. Time and time again, Iraqi air defense radars came online and illuminated American aircraft. There were also numerous cases where Iraqi anti-aircraft guns and missiles engaged American aircraft. In each case, the U.S. military aircraft would retaliate and in most cases, eliminate the offending air defense sites. Among the deployed units were the 4th Air Expeditionary Wing, Camp Doha, Qatar June 1996 and February 1997 in Air Expeditionary Force AEF, Rotations 3 and IV respectively, the 347th Air Expeditionary Wing, Sheikh Issa AB, Bahrain, and the 363d Air Expeditionary Wing at Prince Sultan AB, Saudi Arabia. During this phony war, American pilots gained invaluable experience in air-to-ground tactics that could not be duplicated in practice missions back at home. Combat missions briefly resumed in 1998 during Operation Desert Fox. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Iraq and Afghanistan. Ninth Air Force units, flying as USCENTAF, flew operational missions during the 2002 Operation Enduring Freedom. Afghanistan (OEFA) and the 2003 invasion of Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom (OIF). Air Expeditionary Force units are engaged in combat operations on an ongoing basis. U.S. airmen are increasingly on the ground in Iraq. They drive in convoys and even work with detainees. The main aerial hub in Iraq has 1,500 airmen doing convoy operations in and 1,000 working with detainees. The USAF is also involved in training Iraqis and performing other activities not usually associated with the Air Force. The dangers of the Air Force's new role were highlighted when the Expeditionary Wing lost its first female member in the line of duty in Iraq. 
A1C Elizabeth Jacobson, 21, was killed in a roadside bombing while performing convoy security near the U.S. detention center at Camp Bukka in southern Iraq. More and more Air Force are doing Army jobs," said Senior Master Sergeant. Matt Rossoni, 46, of San Francisco. It's nothing bad about the Army. They're just tapped out. Air Force security forces are traditionally associated with base defense, however, now they provide security for patrols and to deliver supplies. The Air Force also is keeping up with its traditional duties. In November, the 386th Air Expeditionary Wing delivered its one millionth passenger to Iraq since October 2003. USAF missions included transporting troops, casualties and cargo flights. The Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps flew thousands of missions in support of U.S. ground troops in Iraq this fall, including attacks by unmanned predator aircraft armed with Hellfire missiles, military records show. American and Allied refueling, transport and surveillance planes also are in the air. Airstrikes have been largely in areas where the insurgency is strongest, like Ballad, Ramadi and in the vicinity of Baghdad, according to the U.S. Central Command. Units. <laughs> <laughs> 332D Air Expeditionary Wing, reactivated 2015 for Operation Inherent Resolve 379th Air Expeditionary Wing B-1B Lancer, C-130 Hercules, C-17 Globemaster III, E-6B Mercury, E-8C Joint Stars, KC-135 Stratotanker, P-3 Orion, RC-135 Rivet Joint Al Udiyat Air Base, Qatar 380th Air Expeditionary Winge 3 Sentry, KC-10 Extender, RQ-4 Global Hawk, U-2 Dragon Lady Al Dafra Air Base, United Arab Emirates 386th Air Expeditionary WINGC 130 Hercules Ali Al Salem Air Base, Kuwait 9th Air and Space Expeditionary Task Force, Afghanistan 438th Air Expeditionary Winged at 1. 438th Air Expeditionary Advisory Group Maza -e Sharif Airfield 438th Air Expeditionary Advisory Group Kabul Airport Det 1. 438th Air Expeditionary Advisory Group Jalalabad Airfield 738th Air Expeditionary Advisory Group Kandahar Airfield NATO Air Training Command Afghanistan Kabul Airport Kabul International Airport Afghanistan 455th Air Expeditionary Winger 10 Thunderbolt 2 F16 Fighting Falcon C130 Hercules HH60 Pave Hawk MC12 Liberty EC130 Compass Call Bagram Airfield Afghanistan 451st Air Expeditionary Group, Kandahar and units assigned to the command are 609th Air and Space Operations Central Udiyat Air Base, Qatar First Expeditionary Civil Engineer Group 557 Expeditionary Red Horse Squadron 577 Expeditionary Prime Beef Squadron Udiyat Air Base, Katano, the 432D Air Expeditionary Wing is an Air Combat Command Unit headquartered at Creech AFB, Nevada. It operates RQ-1 Predator and MQ-9 Reaper UAV aircraft in the AFCENTAOR. Topic: <inaudible> Lineage and assignments. Established as 5th Air Support Command on the 21st of August 1941, activated on the 1st of September 1941. Redesignated 9th Air Force on the 8th of April 1942. Redesignated as 9th Air Force on the 18th of September 1942. Inactivated on the 2nd of December 1945. Activated on the 28th of March 1946. Redesignated 9th Air Force Tactical on the 1st of August 1950. Redesignated 9th Air Force on the 26th of June 1951. Co-designation United States Central Command Air Forces (CENTAF) established the 1st of January 1983. CENTAF designation used for 9th Air Force assets assigned to United States Central Command Redesignated, 9th Air Force Air Forces Central, on 1 March 2008. Redesignated, United States Air Forces Central, on 5 August 2009. Assignments Air Force Combat Command later Army Air Forces the 1st of September 1941 United States Army Forces in the Middle East the 12th of November 1942 European Theater of Operations United States Army the 3rd of November 1943 
United States Strategic Air Forces in Europe later United States Air Forces in Europe the 22nd of February 1944 to the 2nd of December 1945 Tactical Air Command the 28th of March 1946 Continental Air Command the 1st of December 1948 Tactical Air Command the 1st of December 1950 Air Combat Command the 1st of June 1992 present Topic Stations Topic Major Components Topic World War Two Units Topic USAF Air Divisions Topic Known in Active Air Expeditionary Units See Organization of United States Air Force Units in the Gulf War for units and deployment of CENTAF forces during Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm. Topic: <laughs> Service and Campaign Streamers. War in Southwest Asia. Defense of Saudi Arabia, Desert Shield 1990-1991. Liberation of Kuwait, Desert Storm 1991 equals equals awards